first of all, thank you everyone for you know making time out of the middle of your day today to join us for our Prime Day webinar. Uh, we wanted to make this a two-part series to really tackle multiple components of Prime Day. And what's quite exciting here is we just found out today, sort of hot off the press, exactly what day Prime is going to be. So we had our guests, there was a lot of you know speculation going around, um, but specifically the days are going to be on the 21st and the 22nd of this month. So it will be a two day series uh, for Prime Days, which has been pretty common recently. Um, and so that was something we wanted to kind of start off here since we're excited that our Prime Day webinar is going to be happening the same day that they announced the exact days. So to kind of kick things off here, um, wanted to go over just what our agenda looks like of today. We have a lot of good topics that are being covered today um, from three different people that will be speaking today. So first, what we're going to be going over is inventory and just how to best manage, you know, excess inventory and really how to avoid those long storage uh, fees that you can endure on Amazon. Um, after that, we're going to be understanding your options just with the repricing for before the event and post the event. Um, pricing and understanding that kind of like those price wars are always something that are being asked from brands all around. So just to better understand how you can utilize that here for Prime Day. Um, also, which promotions can yield the best return? You know, there are a lot of different promotion options out there. And so really understanding how to best get the return out of those promotions. Um, will help you with your Prime Day strategy. Then from there, we're gonna go through easy advertising wins for the event. Um, we know that Amazon has become incredibly competitive, so making sure that your advertising is truly buttoned up will help your overall strategy. And then that leads us into just going over what kind of custom creative sees the best events and best results. Uh, and then also how to leverage Amazon Post for Prime Day. And then we'll follow up with questions. So if you have any questions at any time during the event, feel free to throw them in the chat box and then we'll make sure to go over those at the end. So next we have three really great speakers here. I'm going to let them go and introduce themselves simultaneously or one by one. Um, but first we'll start with Tim and he can go over you know, who he is and what he'll be talking about today. Great, thanks, Jenny. My name's uh, Tim Bildstein. I'm the Director of Sales and Business Development at Seller Active, which is a multi-channel management platform. I've been working at Seller Active for just over six years now in the e-commerce space for over 12 years. I started out as a seller myself uh, 12 plus years ago, buying books, DVDs, CDs, distributions from the Goodwills, the Salvation Army is how many people on Amazon in the early 2000s got their start. So we've uh, opened up multiple distribution centers across the country. So I have firsthand experience as both a seller and working with uh, various inventory systems over the past 12 years. Awesome. Thanks, Jenny. Um, so my name is Sam Blush. I work here at Ignite as the senior Amazon strategist. I've got about four or five years of direct to Amazon account manage experience dealing with all things from inventory to advertising to launching new seller accounts, helping with vendor negotiations, really anything Amazon related, I have experience with it. I've also worked with brands of all sizes from small mom and pops to large enterprise accounts. So, uh, and today I'll be talking specifically about promotions and advertising and how to take advantage of them both for the event. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Duffy, and I am an Amazon specialist here at Ignite. And I have four years of digital marketing and sales experience, and then two years specifically really focusing on the Amazon social and Google paid side. And today I'll be talking about creative Amazon posts. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. And I know I didn't introduce myself, but I work here also at Ignite Visibility. I am our senior director of Amazon, and today I will be the MC hosting this, and then tomorrow I will be speaking. So thank you again, everyone, for attending our webinar today, and we will dive right in. So first and foremost, we have an intro poll. We just want to better understand 
uh, you know, who's here and if you've experienced Prime Day before or if this is your Prime Day. So first, if you could put in the chat box, you know, is this your first Prime Day event or, you know, are you uh, mm -hmm. an experienced Prime Day advertiser slash seller on Amazon? And then secondly, are you running any promotions for Prime Day? So just toss that in the chat box um, so we can get a better understanding of, you know, who we're talking to and then um, we will get going. Perfect. So it looks like we have. Um, you know, a few new people, some that are running promotions, and it looks like we have a little mixed bag here. So um, this will be helpful for everyone, whether you are new to selling on Amazon during Prime or running promotions or not. Okay, so to kick it off, first we're going to be talking about the inventory as stated before and pricing strategy. So I will move this over to Tim to begin going over all of these components. Great. Thanks, Jenny. So, uh, yeah, as she mentioned, today I'm going to share uh, some of the inventory management methods and, and tools we've seen our sellers successfully implement in their own business. That's one going to help them with Prime Day, but also Prime Day and beyond. So one of the first methods we've seen our clients implement and one of the more effective is the, the JIT, or the, the just-in-time inventory strategy. So this strategy is, is really built to align orders from suppliers with various production schedules and using this approach, manufacturers, sellers can increase efficiency, decrease wasting, receiving goods, and along with that, uh, reducing storage fees, storage costs, uh, avoiding excess inventory and really keeping your products fresh on the self, uh, shelf, excuse me, and that's also a good way into the FIFO strategy. So it, it sounds just like it said, first in, first out. And the main idea with the FIFO strategy we see our sellers focus on is the, the products you receive first and have been held on the longest or should also be the closest to being obsolete or expired. So for this reason, goods that have been produced or acquired first should also be sold first. So this will keep inventory valuation higher, prevent stock from being unsellable, and really kind of the, the main focus in here is spending your time on those specific products that come first in, whether that's advertising on those, whether that's pricing adjustments or some other various techniques we'll cover here. So um, on top of that, there's the push and pull strategy, which really boils down to, to risk. Now, if you're not familiar with the, the push and pull, it's, it's really kind of the question is, do you preemptively order enough product to meet demand, saving on manufacturing costs and risking that product won't sell? Or do you order product to maintain minimal acceptable inventory levels, saving on storage costs and risking that you won't have enough product to meet demand? So the push strategy, this technique relies heavily on forecasting demand. So as businesses estimate how many units of specific SKUs they'll need for the coming month, quarter, a year. So that's really more of a forecasting technique to know how much inventory you actually need on hand during specific times of the year, whereas a pool strategy is a method which shop owners keep stocks at a minimum level, and rather than focus, focusing on forecasting or preemptively placing orders for more inventory, a pool strategy really determines the lowest acceptable inventory that you can keep in your warehouse. So to achieve these three strategies, there are three critical factors to help measure and implement and ensure you have the right inventory in stock, one for Prime Day, um, but for moving forward for your business. Now, one is a time-based model. The time-based model revolves around expected days of inventory left and supplier lead times. So with the time-based model, you'll need some measurement of a sales velocity or how many items sell over a given time period um, with an expected runout date relative to how long it takes to receive inventory for a fulfill, to a fulfillment location, whether that's your warehouse, whether that's sending items to FBA, having a system that actually tracks how many units are selling over a given time period, you also then need to calculate that when it comes into a manufacturing time and then time it takes to get that manufacturing to your warehouse or after FBA. So we find that model the most successful among the sellers we use. Uh, a more simplistic model is also volume-based. Uh, this is usually a quicker, easier to implement. It's simply putting an inventory system in place uh, where you get a notification on a SKU level 
when you reach a set inventory level. For example, if you have a, a SKU and you just want a, an email notification or some system to notify you when you reach a, a level of 10, uh, that's a good system to always make sure you're notified when you're running low on inventory. Um, and the other method is a profit base. This simply is using um, you know, sales reports, inventory reports to track whether or not items are actually profitable from one restock to the next. So all of these techniques can and should be calculated through a software application to better run your business um, and better utilizing the above strategies will go a long ways in, in eliminating dead stock. And dead stock is not good as the name implies. It's stock that's just languishing in your warehouse for an extended period of time. So there's a high likelihood of these items never selling, which means lost revenue, lost opportunity, increased holding costs, and even employee costs. So utilizing all these various methods and kind of formulating that good strategy is going to make sure your forecast have the right inventory on stock during the right times of the year. So uh, that leads us to our next slide and uh, really techniques in which you can utilize various softwares to refine your inventory strategy. Uh, so when we talk about diversifying inventory and maximizing inventory levels really what we're talking about there is forecasting expected sales and ensuring you don't run out of stock during one of the biggest sales days of the year so one of these strategies we've seen implemented in the past in this past year more than ever is allocating your available inventory by utilizing multiple fulfillment centers so many of us and many of our clients this was a major hurdle this past year when the, the FDA restrictions came about is you know there was the necessity items where you were limited to the amount of items that you cannot send to the FDA and that that's obviously eased up a little bit um, but one way to diversify that and our clients found successful was implementing you know fulfillment center allocation and what that really means is okay you want to utilize a system that tracks where your inventory is how much inventory you have in stock and then as soon as one of those fulfillment centers run out of inventory you know that you have a backup fulfillment center that's always going to meet the demand and be able to fulfill those orders. So having a system in place that can track and manage to always keep up with the demand is something that goes a long way. Um, another key tool our sellers find successful is the, the auto convert function from an FBA to a merchant fulfilled listing. So what that means is, you know, as soon as FBA runs out of stock, well, you may have stock in your warehouse, but you don't have time to get it into FBA, so you just want to have something trigger and convert that listing to a merchant fulfilled listing, and that's going to allow you to keep selling items, you know, even if you run out of FBA and you don't have to worry about staying up in the middle of the night to make that change or convert that function, a system or a software is going to automatically keep fulfilling those products for you. Um, and also minimize risk of overselling. So I'm sure a lot of us out there are selling on multiple marketplaces. So as Prime Day, we all know the demand increases. So if you, the last thing anybody wants to do is, you know, oversell or have to cancel an order, that's going to hurt your feedback, uh, your ratings. So having a system to manage that and to, to monitor that across the channels is also a big key thing with Prime Day just as a protection. Um, product bundling, you know, if you're not familiar with product bundling, uh, it is the act of combining individual goods together as a combined package at a lower price than if they were sold individually. You now, one of the more underutilized techniques we find, and it also assists with moving some products off the shelf more quickly and alleviating dead stocks. You know, if you have an item that isn't selling, you know, it's a good strategy to, to put it together with another listing uh, to get it off the shelf. So not only does it help move items more quickly, uh, it can also raise the average order value, uh, lower your shipping costs by bundling those items together in a, the same package. And then um, last but not least, the, the creating the urgency and, and oversell protection also through buffers. Uh, if you're not familiar with a, a buffer system, I'm sure many of us have seen it when they, we try to go buy something on Amazon, you may see that there's only three items left available for sale or a certain amount of items left in stock. Well, clients and our clients specifically and multiple people may have hundreds or even thousands of items sitting in their warehouse. What a quantity buffer can do for you is display a discrepancy of what is actually available for sale and increase that urgency on the buyer's end. So, you know, during Prime Day, if you only see only two left available for sale, um, just from the buyer's perspective, you're more likely to buy that product um, because it puts that urgency on that item that it's running out of stock. So utilizing something during Prime Day, during peak seasonality for you, or even holiday season 
these buffers do a great job of putting that urgency to buy the product. So uh, next slide talking about competitive repricing. Right, so there's really three main pricing strategies and it's really kind of comes down to the persona or what type of seller you are from a, a reseller, a wholesaler who has direct competition on the same product. We find the, the algorithmic model um, the most successful in terms of not leaving any money on the table while maximizing share of the buy box. Um, the whole goal of an algorithm is to evaluate the buy box, how Amazon weighs certain metrics such as fulfillment type, fulfillment speed, feedback, competitor scores, and make sure you're selling the most highest possible buy box price. Um, seeing 82% of all sales on Amazon happen in that buy box, it's a pretty important to to make sure you're always trying to mirror that and get the highest possible price in there. The, the rule based, uh, this is more targeted towards competing against specific competitors only, maybe only repricing during set hours of the day, um, picking a price fish position. You know, if you have competitors or you don't want to be the, the lowest price or only compete against an FBA or MFN, there's certain rules you can put in place there that really is maximizing the buy box, uh, but also it's not a race to the bottom. You know, a lot of the, that's the common perception is. Winning the buy box is always race to the bottom, but the algorithm prevents that to make sure you're not leaving any money on the table. Um, then last but not least uh, is the velocity method. Now, I think a lot of us in brand owners, you know, we track this on a, on a manual level is, you know, if things aren't moving, we'll go in there and manually adjust the price. And that's that's not scalable long-term. You know, if you have a, an application like a velocity method, what that does, you know, even though you're not competing exact, exact the same product or someone's exact same product, what you're putting in place there is different time intervals when to adjust price up or down. So if you want to sell 10 units in a week and if you don't hit that goal, well, an automated system can adjust price down a certain dollar or percentage based off that set time frame um, to try to move the product. Uh, if it does reach a goal, it's going to move the price up a certain dollar percentage. So really, it's to alleviate items sitting on shelf. You know, alleviate that dead stock. We don't want items sitting on, on the shelf forever. Uh, but essentially, it's also trying to find that optimal price point to sell product for um, as the seasonality changes. So a lot of that is mainly done right now when we find that very successful during Prime Day. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very helpful for brand owners to, to not mainly have to do that process anymore. So that about covers it uh, for my slides. So I'll let you take it next. myself and thank you tim for going over inventory i know inventory has been a common just um challenge and things that we're constantly getting asked by brands and different sellers on amazon so it's always good to make sure that you're up to date on all the inventory best practices if you have additional questions like i said toss it in the chat box we'll be able to respond at the end and then also you can always email us after this if you have even more questions on that front so next we will be moving over to promotions and advertising options for the event sam is going to be taking it away for us and we will get into that section now perfect thank you jenny um so while you know prime day was just announced we talked about that at the beginning of the webinar um your deadlines for promotion submissions have unfortunately already passed i'm hoping that most of you were able to take advantage of you know some degree of promotion for the event just because of the um you know sheer results that we typically see with products that are on promotion during prime day during q4 any sort of holiday so I wanted to cover two of the most commonly used promotions and you know the differences between the two and kind of our recommendations between the two. So uh, on the left hand side, we'll take a look at coupons. Uh, typically, you know, these are if your budgets are tighter or maybe your margins are lower and you don't have room to necessarily splurge on a several hundred dollar lightning deal, a coupon is a really great alternative for you. So um, you could have set these up, um, you know, even without knowing the date range and Amazon does let you later change the date range now that the date has been released for June 21st and 22nd. 
Um, so really the coupons, you know, this is, this is a default for me. This is something I always recommend for our clients um, because there isn't a minimum fee that you need to spend. It's not going to be outrageous. It's typically just a percentage or a dollar off and you're pay paying per redemption. Um, so there's an example just to give you an idea of what that coupon looks like. It'll have a slash out of the uh, list price and it'll show you the, whether, you know, there's a 5% or, you know, a dollar off coupon. Um, so this is definitely what I fall back on um, and recommend to every client, you know, even if you don't have a lot of budget, this is an easy uh, promotion to take advantage of. And then on the right hand side, we're looking at lightning deals. So these are really fun and exciting because you get featured on the uh, deals page for Prime Day as well as for Q4. So um, obviously we know consumers are shopping for deals on this day. So they're able to quickly access that page and potentially see your product. Of course, it'll vary based on the time that they're accessing that page and when your deal is actually running since these deals only run for up to six hours. Um, there are pros and cons to each, uh, definitely more, um, I would say, cons to lightning deals compared to coupons because you do have no control over that time frame. You could be you know, seen from two to 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and not get really access to anyone on the West Coast. So um, these deals, you know, what's nice about them is you could have submitted them in advance and potentially just, you know, deleted or removed them if the time frame wasn't what you wanted. Um, there is a minimum 15% discount that's required and they have about a $500 fee for Prime Day or Prime Day week. It is obviously optimal to get featured during the Prime Day, you know, that two day period. Um, but this is pretty much to wrap up just kind of the main two uh, promotions that we see most frequently used between sellers and vendors uh, for Prime Day. And then moving on to my next slide, I wanted to talk through some easy advertising wins for the event. We know now it's about three weeks out, so it's coming up really soon. Um, I first wanted to talk about sponsored brands. So um, hopefully you're familiar with these if you are running advertising. Um, these were commonly or first called headline search ads. So this is what's showing up at the very top of the SERP for a given keyword. It's the first thing that a consumer will see whether they're on mobile or desktop. So really great way to get more visibility, more eyes on your products and you can drive them into your storefront. So lots of great benefits for running these ads. But specifically for Prime Day, what's great about these ads is they're the only ad type that actually allows you to dictate your ad copy. Um, so here's an example from Colgate, um, you know, you're able to use sales specific verbiage, verbiage in your ad copy uh, for the event for Q4, all of that. So we recommend that you set these up in advance just to make sure that your ad copy will get approved. Um, you can do a couple of quick searches, but typically Amazon will allow save now or uh, on sale today and you know it changes every year what they actually allow you to say but it's a good idea to set these up and try out a couple of different ad copies first um, and see which sticks um, so you'll actually want to save them as drafts um, and make sure that you're using the correct date range so now that we know the date range you can go ahead and set this up save it as a draft maybe play around and try out a couple of them and then set them all to uh, for approval before the event so that you know which ones will actually get approved. Um, with sponsored brands, like I said, you can drive them into your store and we, we recommend using a Prime Day deals landing page on your storefront. You can drive traffic directly into there. So for example, in this uh, example we have here, our most popular brushes on sale now, that would direct you into that Prime Day deals landing page. Great way to get more eyeballs to your page from there. Consumers can follow your brand um, and you can actually email them with a customer engagement tool that Marissa is going to talk a little bit more about in a few slides, but um, a really great way to just help increase engagement, increase visibility, get more eyes to your detail pages and your storefront. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, make sure that you're getting in that top placement of the SERP for the keywords that are most important to your brand and your products. 
And then on our last slide, just continuing on with some easy advertising wins. So uh, when I introduced myself, I shared I have about five years of direct Amazon account management experience. So I've been through several prime days. So these are sort of my suggestions and best practices for what to do um, when it comes to the event. So an easy, quick win is to create a bulk download sheet prior to the event. So you can do this in your Ad Console account under bulk operations. You would just simply click download and save that somewhere. So basically what that's doing is it's saving all of your budgets and your bids. And um, basically you have a place where all of that information is stored. So you can upload that sheet back into Amazon and basically revert all of your budgets and bids back down to what they were pre-prime level. So we know the event's three weeks away. Next week, we're likely going to start upping bids and upping budgets just in preparation as we start to see the marketplace and the categories get more competitive and more expensive. So this is a really easy way to make sure you're able to bring everything back down, dial everything back down and not see an enormously high ACOS right after the event. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, setting budgets high the week prior to and then beginning to increase bids several days before the event. You will likely see a, a cost start to come up, of course, depending on your vertical. But what we see typically the week before or even the weekend before is a lot of clicking and not a lot of purchasing because consumers are really waiting and looking and browsing and just getting an idea of what's out there, what they need and what they want to see on promotion. Um, so this is a great opportunity for display advertising, which Jenny will get into tomorrow. Um, and uh, definitely something we recommend uh, kind of pulling into your media mix. Uh, lastly, outside of our bonus, um, you can set a daily maximum budget in Ad Console under the settings on the home page. If you have really tight budgets, this is not something I would recommend and something I really try to steer away from um, because setting a maximum daily budget basically means when we hit that budget, everything turns off and you lose any momentum that you have created, any velocity you've created with your advertising. So it can definitely stick a wrench in your, your advertising. If you're doing that daily, it's, it's, it's just really, you're not going to see long-term success from doing that. But if you have you know, an account where your budget is really, really tight and you cannot go over, this is a good option for you. And then lastly, our bonus, um, and this is something we do with all of the clients that we work with um, and recommend, is web to Amazon or driving traffic into your Amazon storefront, your Amazon detail pages from external sites like Google, social media, um, really any other places that you're running ads, driving them and sending them into Amazon specifically for the event. You can definitely do this, you know, non-prime day, non-holiday as well if your margins are there. But this is a great opportunity to drive people into your deals page, to drive them into a product detail page that has a really great coupon, promotion, lightning deal, whatever it might be, to help get more eyeballs on that page. And this will also in turn kind of, Amazon sort of rewards you in a way for doing this. Um, this is a part of their new A10 algorithm, uh, which basically they're, they're weighing how much traffic you're bringing in from external sites. Because in Amazon's eyes, those are consumers that would have not already have made it to amazon.com that are now coming because you're driving them in. So that can help increase your organic rank on your products during the event, but also after the event. So really beneficial to test out if your margins are there, if you're running big discounts, just to help get more eyeballs to those pages. Perfect. And thank you, Sam, for going over that component. So now we will be kicking it off to Marissa for this section is going to be how to position your creative content for Prime Day. Um, as we all know, creative is crucial. Um, and so she's going to go deep into it a little bit more of just specifically with Amazon. So take it off, Marissa. Thank you, Jenny. Hi, everyone. I'm super excited to talk to you guys about the creative opportunities that exist on Amazon and how you can those to help boost sales both on Prime Day and after. So why does press creative matter? 
As we all know, Amazon's main priority is customer satisfaction, but they're going to take all the steps necessary to really ensure this positive shopping experience. And so Custom Tree is a great way for brands to enhance that customer experience while also drawing attention to their ads and piquing customers' interest. And as Sam had kind of talked about with the shift to the new A10 algorithm, Amazon has placed an emphasis on content and creative, and that really will help play a role in boosting your organic ranking. It's crucial to have this stuff optimized. And on the advertising side, custom creative campaigns really help to brand awareness and boost engagement. And that helps diversify your product, especially when trying to sell a popular category. And so um, custom creative for you can run custom creative for sponsored brand, sponsored display, and DSP ads. And so for sponsored brand ads, you can alter, you can do custom images and cut headlines. And then for sponsored display ads, you can do custom headlines and custom logos. And then for DSP, as Benny will talk a little bit more about the DSP side tomorrow, but you can do custom background, headline, and brand logos. And then what sees the best results? So while you can't force people to look at your content, there are definitely certain things you can do to help make your creative more appealing for customers and really capture their attention. So first is clickable content, and that is just to make sure everything in that that you are running a sponsored brand as can be clicked on to see either a product detail page or a front. So as you can see in the bottom image here, make sure every customer was could click on takes you first. So right here to take you to the store front, and then on the side, we could go to individual product detail pages. Next is shoppable images. And this is something you can advantage of in your storefront. So if you use any imagery, especially lifestyle imagery, where your product is featured, just make sure it's shovel so customers can click on it and be taken product detail pages where they can read more of this product and hopefully purchase it. And I said style imagery because this is the best type of creative to help customers really see this your product in use while also highlighting anything that could set you up from the competition. And so next we have short attention grabbing headlines and titles that really highlight the brand, your brand or product's unique selling point. So you keep it nice, short, and deep, but make sure you have something that really captures the customer's attention. Say, oh, I'm different from my competitors because of reason. Next, leading up to Prime Day, we have about this two and a half week, three week period. So it's the perfect time to A-B test these headlines and images to see what performs best and take those learns and run ads on the best performing ads that you've seen so far and really just take advantage of those learnings to run with performs best Prime Day. And Sam talked about this earlier, but with your front, consider making Prime Day detail or Prime Day, Prime Day detail page and include all the products that you're running deals on as customers are coming to your page and to see what they can do with the best deals are. So having it all in spot makes it really easy for them to get to make make those purchases. And then next, you run those sponsored brand ads specifically for Prime Day and really just take advantage of that traffic. And we want to drive people to storefront because they can follow your brand on the front. And that's just another way you can interact with Comstock on Amazon. Next is the importance of videos. So a video marketing study done by Wise Owl found that 84% of customers say they've been convinced to buy a product or service by watching brands videos as it helps them understand how the product works. And so Amazon has two opportunities for brands to take advantage of this video feature, and that's through the storefront and with sponsored brand video ads. And so in the storefront, you can have it on the title page, you can have it on any other pages within the storefront, and it just really shows who are the brand, take videos that showcase products and your brand story. And then with sponsored brand videos, it's a great way to showcase unique product features. And these ads are really engaging, reach relevant audiences at all stages of the purchase funnel. And so Amazon has released data showing specifically for sponsored brand video ads that these campaigns generate 100 to 200% higher click-through rates and 20 to 40% higher return on ad spend than regular sponsored brand campaigns. So that really just shows how powerful these ads can be. And moving to the next slide, we're going to move into Amazon posts. So posts are Amazon's latest way for brands to drive product discovery and brand awareness 
by appearing on your product detail pages and the product detail pages of your competitors. As you can see in the video here, it's at the bottom of the product detail page. And it's a great way for brands to organically reach shoppers for free and just send traffic to your product detail pages and other products that you can feature in these posts due to the shoppable image format. And so the feature is currently in beta and it's only able to be seen while using Amazon app or Amazon mobile, but Amazon has just added a post section to store pages. So if you are storefront and you um, have just the different tabs, one of those tabs will be post. So those people shopping on their desktop see your post. And to use post, you must be brand registered, but it's available for both vendors and sellers. And currently posts are only allowing images to be uploaded, but because it is in beta, we're gonna expect to see a lot of changes being made. Hopefully one day see videos will also be able to be used in this format. So what makes a strong post? There are a couple of the ways that you can make your post as strong as possible. First is lifestyle imagery. So you really want to showcase your products being used. This is a great way to show off all your product features and different yourself, differentiate yourself from the competitors. So in this example, you can see, oh, perfect. In this example, you can see this, we have a high quality image here with the athletic wear in use and an informative caption that really gives you an idea of who the brand is and why their product is great. But on the second post over here on this side, you don't really see what they sell because there's no image, just a logo, which doesn't mean much if you're not familiar with the brand. And then Jenny, if you could go back one slide. Oh, perfect. So next, once again, we have a really strong first lifestyle imagery with a caption hanging what makes the product unique. But in the second post, we have an uninformative caption and really cluttered imagery, making it hard for customers to focus on just one image. And as we know, customers have a really short attention span. So if they lose image, they're not going to interact with your, uh, your post. And so you really want to focus on making sure those images are engaging and high quality to capture shoppers' attention. Think to yourself, what would I post on my social media? If the answer is I would post this, I would post this image, then you want to put it on Amazon. And save the text to the caption. Really allow the customers to focus on your product. You don't need to add text on top of the images. Just keep it down below. Because if you, you do put on the images, it could look a little bit messy or be distracting, make consumers not want to reach with your post. And then with the captions, really take full advantage to tell your brand story and highlight those unique selling points for both your brand and your product. Try to fit the caption in the space provided though to keep consumers from having to click the little more option if you go beyond the little two lines over here, as many will lose interest and it can cause them to click away. And then lastly, captions, you don't wanna use discounts, promos, like buy now because they're 50% off in the post caption because Amazon, it's against the Amazon's policies. You also wanna not use consumer reviews, like leave consumer reviews for the product detail pages. And then lastly, do not drive any traffic off Amazon. So don't say, visit us at our website here, keep everything on Amazon, promote the product on Amazon. So now that you've learned all of posts, how can you use them for Prime Day? So first, you should start posting daily leading up to the Prime Day event and after Prime Day to really capture all the new to brand consumers you have, as well as the people who are currently following your brand. And so the UI actually allows you to schedule posts in advance. So if you have the content now and you're using it on your social media already, upload the images into the UI for Amazon posts. Take some time, really sit down, get them all scheduled out, and you can sit down right now for an hour and schedule all your posts out for the month of June. Next, take advantage of A-B testing and see what images and captions get the best engagement and light, or get the best impressions and engagements as well as clicks. And once you figure out what works after about two to three weeks, really scale it up. Next, be sure to showcase a variety of products from your catalog. This is a great opportunity to fully display everything you, your brand has to offer. And don't just feature your best sellers. Yes, customers can really see the variety of products offer and so you could pair one of your best sellers along with one of your less performing bikes and just help customers fully browse all your, all your catalogs. Next, you can build a brand following and really use that to interact with customers through the Amazon new Manage Your Customer Engagement tool. And this tool is something very, very new to Amazon, but 
it allows you to really engage with your customers and off, off Amazon by sending them an email. And so you have to contact them, all your new brand followers and say, you have a new product, check it out, go to visit our page on Amazon. And that wraps up creative content. Perfect. Great. So thank you all for going over that part of part one for today. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read off a couple of these questions that we have in the question section, and then I will let um, the specific person answer those for you. So the first one that we got here is going to be let me pull this up. So to set up a Prime Day, um, to set up a sale for Prime Day, would you suggest a coupon or just to put the lowest price? Yeah, great question. I'll take this one. Um, I would, do, just given the nature of the event and the fact that we know consumers are specifically looking for those little coupon lightning deal badges, I would 100% percent recommend using some kind of coupon or promotional tool rather than just adjusting your price. Um, reason being the consumer cannot see when when or if you've changed your price. Um, if you're changing the list price, it can also mess with um, you know any kind of uh, buy box or you know offer issue um so just to completely avoid that i would definitely recommend using a coupon rather than changing your list price but great question a great question and then the next question will be more around post um so one of the questions that we have here is just how do i set an amazon post I'll take this one. Great question. So to set up an Amazon post, you're just going to go to post.amazon.com and sign in using your ad console seller central login. And then you create a profile by setting up your brand name and uploading your brand logo. And then for there's just a little button at the top that says start creating posts and you just upload your image, get a caption in there and then tag all relevant featured in the photo. Great. Great question. Okay, so then also um, something more along the inventory side of things. So how quickly does it take to go live with some of these inventory techniques? Yeah, good question. It really kind of depends on the technique. You know, if you're um, you know, kidding, bundling, then that may take a couple of days to import a file, get all those set up. You know, if you don't have the time or resources and, you know, you want us to, to help with that, you know, we have a professional services team that will simply set all that up for you, you know, whether it's creating listings, advising what items that you recommend to bundle based off the, you know, likelihood they'll sell, you know, we have a full team dedicated to that, you know, repricing wise, if you want to test out the, the repricing, um, you know, we have a free trial coming out here in the next couple of weeks, so you can go in there and make sure it is a good fit for you, test it out, but it doesn't take usually more than a, a couple days or two at the very most to get in there and go live with these. Perfect. And that's a great question too. And then also again, with just the promotions, um, if you miss the deadlines for coupons and lightning deals, what other types of promotions or actions do you recommend we do? It's a great question. That is a really good question. And unfortunately the deadline was just last week. Um, so if you did miss that deadline, um, Something I would recommend is, you know, driving traffic into Amazon from your social or your Google media ads with the tagline of, you know, shop our deals, shop our discounts um, and, you know, put, positioning it in more of a creative sense since there isn't really a way to um, kind of further discount. I know with Prime Day last year, you know, obviously it was with COVID, but there were some exceptions that Amazon made to the deadlines. So I don't think it hurts to log into your account and, you know, play around with the promotion tools and see if there is, you know, maybe, uh, you know, something's able to slip through um, in terms of getting a promotion approved. Um, it definitely can't hurt you just to try um, and see if you're able to push something through because a promotion is definitely going to make a difference in the amount of the, the sales that you'll see and the um, amount of return you'll see to the event. Okay, great question. And then another one that we just got in here is, does switching from FBA to Merchant Fulfilled harm the buy, bu the buy button? But I think buy box is what we're looking for here. 
Yeah, that's a, another really good question. I'm loving all of these questions from you guys. Um, it should not impact your buy box. Really what's going to impact your buy box is um, price, unless you have other offers on your detail page. So if there are resellers that are selling your product, your agent, um, and they have an FBA offer, they will likely take the buy box if you move to FBM. If there's nobody else there selling your product, it should not impact your buy box. I have seen instances where it has, but it's been more of a glitch and it's something you can contact support to troubleshoot. Perfect. And then we got another great question coming in here. So where is the customer engagement tool on Seller Central or in advertising? So it'll be at that top bar under one of the drop downs. I believe it's under the advertising section, but it is in um, Seller Central. Yes. And one thing to keep in mind, you have to be brand registered um, to be able to utilize the customer engagement tool. It is still in beta, they're still working on it. Um, one of the things that this came about was because a lot of sellers and a lot of direct-to-consumer brands were really trying to find more ways to communicate with their shoppers on Amazon since Amazon recently took away, you know, the responding to reviews in different areas where you can communicate with your customer base. So this is for, remember, brand registered sellers. Um, it is still in beta, but there'll be different ways that you can communicate with them. It will be coming directly from Amazon, but as we know, customers trust Amazon. That's why they're consistently on there. So there's different types of things that you can do, like, you know, letting them know about new products or new promotions or things along those lines, but it will be there right within that section. Um, next question here. So by having the lowest price, would you win the buy box? Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Jen. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, Tim, no, go, feel free to take yeah, you're the Amazon expert too, but I mean, from what we've seen, it's a, it depends on the strategy, it just depends on fulfillment type, it depends on lead time to ship, competitor score, so I mean, a lot of the times, yes, you will win the buy box, but if you're a brand new seller going up against somebody who has a lot of selling history, but uh, who's selling the FBA, you know, a lot of the times having FBA fulfillment in that past history is going to go a long ways in achieving the buy box at a higher price, so it's, it's not always the lowest price, there's a lot of metrics that go into it, so yeah, it's it's not always the lowest. Absolutely, I would 100% agree with that. I think there was one other question just around um, driving traffic into either a storefront or a product detail page. If you're driving traffic web to Amazon, you know, externally, um, it really depends on your goals of getting, you know, of driving that traffic. If your goal is to sell through a lot of inventory for one specific product, I would definitely say drive it into that PDP. If your goal is more brand awareness and to showcase your, your storefront and your entire product catalog, then I would definitely go more for uh, driving that into your store. Um, and then also, you know, with what we've been talking about today with the new customer engagement tool, this is a really good opportunity if you are driving into the store to get people to follow your brand and to be able to email them and contact them later on. Perfect. And so we have just a few minutes left here. I think we got the majority of your questions. So thank you so much for all of these questions. They've all been really strong questions. Like I said before, if you have additional ones that you did not think about today, feel free to email us and reach out to us. Um, we can help you out here. And then also um, one of the things here that we do at Ignite, if you guys are looking for potentially to partner with an agency or partner with you know someone to really help scale your business on Amazon, feel free to reach out to us. We do custom analysis of your Amazon account. And then also if you have anything along the lines of needing help with inventory, repricing strategy, you know, managing all of your marketplaces, then you can reach out to Tim um, over at Seller Active. They can help with that as well. Uh, we both partner together to make sure that we are really providing anyone that we work with with the best solutions out there for Amazon. Um, so thank you all for your time today. Tomorrow will be the same time uh, on Thursday, so at 11 a.m. PST. We will be covering everything along the lines of display. So uh, Amazon's display network with this 
the demand side network there. Um, so we will be going over tactics before Prime Day as well as how to utilize that data afterwards. And then also everything around just reviews. You know, this is when people are excited and stoked and purchasing products. So this is a great time to really work on, you know, growing your reviews on Amazon. And then also just different tips and tricks of, you know, things we learned from last year and then, um, you know, how to replicate them for this for this upcoming year that's coming in a few weeks. So we hope to see you all tomorrow. And then also for some of you that have asked, yes, we will be sending out this recording. Um, so you'll be getting both today's as well as tomorrow's. And again, thank you all for coming and thank you all for our speakers today. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed going over all of the tactics for Prime Day. And I hope you all have a very successful Prime uh, couple of days. <laughs>